Hello everyone and welcome to another video from Captain Hep School of Flight. Today we're going to be talking about engine controls, manual engine controls, and also multi-engine controls. Most of this is going to be live commentary though, so without further ado, we'll get started. Okay, so it really makes the most sense if we start doing this from a very modern civilian aircraft because it's got all these color-coded knobs and everything else. Uh, it just makes it easier to understand. The plane I'm sitting in at the moment is called a Piper Seneca. It is a small twin-engined six-seat plane, similar to a couple of planes that I've been able to spend some time in over the years. But uh, it's fairly simple, and it's easy, and it will just make things a lot easier to understand. So the first engine control we're going to be looking at is the throttle, okay? Everybody is familiar with the throttle. Pushing this forward is like pushing the gas pedal on a car. It allows more air and fuel into the engine when you push it forward than it does when you pull it back. The next one we're going to look at is that red knob on the right. Whoops, that's the wrong one. This one, there we go, okay? So this is your mixture control. Pushing this forwards allows more fuel into the mixture of air and fuel that gets into the engine. So you need air and you need fuel going into the engine for it to work. The farther forward this is, the more percentage of that mixture is going to be fuel. And when you pull this thing all the way back, it actually completely cuts off all fuel to the engine. Air is still getting in, okay? but there will be no more fuel getting into the engine, okay? So the next one over here is the blue one, okay? This is called the prop control. When you push this forwards, okay, you decrease prop pitch, and I'm gonna explain that in a second, but you increase the propeller's RPM. And baby, basically, best illustrate this, we actually have to go outside for a second. So this is the outside of the plane, and right now I've got that blue lever all the way back. I want you to look at the blades on the propellers. If I suddenly click that lever forwards and back, you see, it changes the pitch. If I'm moving it forwards now, you can see the blades changing the angle at which they slice through the air. And that's what we're looking at right here. So basically, if I have that knob all the way forwards, like right now, okay, it's all the way forwards, the blades are slicing through the air at an almost perpendicular angle to the plane's flight path. This is like flying in first gear, okay? It provides the most amount of torque at low speeds. It's like first gear in a car, it's like first gear in a bike. You get the idea. It's a lot of torque, but it can't actually let you go really fast. So what happens is we gradually change the pitch to a flatter and flatter rate as you speed up so that you still get appropriate thrust the faster you go. Does that kind of make sense? It's like shifting into a higher gear in a car. Now I'm not going to go into all the different ramifications of that because most planes it's actually more or less automatic and it's also true in War Thunder and your mixture control actually, this red one down here is also usually automatically controlled in War Thunder but it's good to know what it is because you may at some point want to control it manually. There's one more control down here I'm going to look at and that would be the cowl flaps. And that's the two little knobs way, whoops, wrong way, down here. You can see they should be moving right, there we go. Those control the cowl flaps. Now what these do, I'm going to try and show you this outside the plane really fast. I'm not sure if you'll be able to see it on this particular plane. Right now they're closed, oh, there we go, now they're open. Closed, open. So basically with that cowl flap open, there is now more air able to pass through that engine if I remove the little stops. So now there's more air passing through the engine from behind that propeller, around the engine, and then out through that door. If I close that cowl flap right there, now there's very little air flowing through. Uh, the reason you want to control that is when you're flying slower, you're going to want this to be open because there's less air getting rammed into the front of the engine and you want to be able to maximize the airflow around it to make sure that engine stays cool, especially on takeoff. But when you're going faster, you'll actually want this more or less all the way closed because it still lets a little bit of air around. There'll be a lot of air ramming into the front of the engine, uh, but when it's closed, the plane generates less drag. And you'll see that a little bit later on in War Thunder with a few planes in particular. And excuse me, more drag 
is slowing the plane down. Drag slows the plane down. Less drag allows you to slip through the air more easily. So we're going to go back inside that airplane. Here we go. Wrong button. I'll turn that parking brake on. I don't want this thing drifting off on me. So for now we've got the cowl flaps closed. Okay. And um, what the start procedure would be for a plane like this, we let's see here. We've got already both magnetos on on the left over there. We will want mixture all the way forwards. We'll want the prop all the way forwards. We'll want the throttle open about an inch, give or take. Parking brake is set. Cal flaps closed. I want to just double check. I don't see where my... Hold on a second. So, master. I have radios on. Okay. So, radios come on with the master for this particular plane. That is strange. That's not realistic, actually. You'd never want that. The radios would be destroyed the first time you started the engine. Anywho, if you can hear that noise in the background, that's actually gyros. Uh, vacuum operated gyros spinning up, particularly in this yellow instrument right in front of me called a horizontal situation indicator. And that's honestly one of my favorite noises in the world. I love that noise. I remember always hearing that. That was the anticipation before the engine started. So we've got the master on, everything else is set. Now I would be yelling at the window, clear prop. Throttle is open one inch. Should be able to start. Uh oh. Well, dog on it. That should have started that engine. Why? There! I hit the wrong button. So now that engine will stabilize over there. And then we can actually hit it for the right engine as well. And that one will start spinning over there. That one should stabilize soon. Now that it's stabilized, I can now press the avionics master, and what do you know? We now have both engines running. Just like that. And I'm going to come back in a little bit when I can show you some guys, some flight footage of this plane, okay? So see you in a bit. Okay, so we're getting ready for takeoff. I'm just going to ease the throttle forward. So this is a non-controlled airport, so it doesn't have any control tower or anything like that. And right now there are no other planes flying in the general vicinity, so I can just, like, march out onto the runway like I own it. Oh my goodness, but my frame rate is really, really bad with this game at the moment while I'm recording. Apologize for that. We'll just have to deal with it. And I need to raise my seat a little bit more. Here we go. Hot. Right. And throttling forwards. This plane is a lot easier to control on the ground than the planes in War Thunder because it has something called a steerable nose wheel. Something not too many planes in that game have. Right, give it some up trend. There's 80 knots. And rotating. Come on, little plane. Here we go. And we are airborne. We'll apply the brakes to stop the wheels from spinning. And the gear is coming up. Just like that. Alright. Now, a couple of things that you may notice, and obviously there's a lot of differences between this plane and what you may be used to in War Thunder, um, but a couple of things that will be applicable for you fairly quickly is uh, something called engine feathering or in this case, prop feathering. Now, what this means is if, for some strange reason, I'm going to induce it, you lose an engine. Okay, we're going to lose the left engine. There. I've just completely killed the left engine. And yet as, whoop, there, now it goes. I didn't pull it all the way back. Now it's dead. So now the plane, if I let go of the stick, you can see, really wants to turn hard to the left. Not too violently hard, but hard. Um, but you can see over there the propeller is actually still spinning. That's because it's called a windmill effect. As the air passes by the propeller, it causes it to keep spinning, and it creates a tremendous amount of drag as it flies, as the wind goes past. So what we're going to do is we're going to pull the blue knob on the far right all the way back. Did you see that difference? Now that propeller is set up so that the blades are almost perfectly perpendicular. Hello. Someone's talking on the radio. There we go. 
So the plates are now perpendicular to the flight path of the airplane. And so now that prop, or excuse me, prop is stopped. It's no longer generating anywhere near as much drag as it was before. And as you can see now, I am flying, whoops, <laughs> very controllably on just one engine. Yeah, so nobody's talking on the radio, so now the engines are louder again. But remember that, that's called prop feathering. We're going to look at that a little bit later in the War of Thunder, because it's a little bit more complicated there. Okay? So, I'm going to come back in War of Thunder. Okay, so we are now in War of Thunder. And before we really get started, I want to go over some controls really fast. I want to show you guys, I'm using realistic controls, but to be able to do what I'm doing, you're going to actually have to go into full aircraft controls and then engine control and then set some of this stuff up. You don't have to do it exactly the way I've got it right here, um, but just have a look-see at this, get a feel for it, uh, because you may want to come back to it. One little note down here, yeah, these are the exact same controls right here that you would use for selecting different shells on a tank. However, I'm not driving a tank right now, and I won't be selecting different engines when I am driving a tank, so I actually have these mapped to both at the same time. So that still selects shells at a tank, and it hasn't been an issue for me. Anywho, though, so one little note right here. Uh, when you are setting these, you want to make sure you've got increased value, decreased value. If that says maximum value or minimum value, then you want to go down here where it says relative control. You see? You want it to say yes, not no. You also want that to be at or near 100%. That's personal preference. Um, if you're doing a really fine adjusting, you'll want to bring it down a little bit, but we're not, so it doesn't really matter. So we're going to save those. I'm going to go back out. What? Oh, that's right. Back to settings. Because we don't actually have to stay, these controls will still stay mapped even if we hit realistic controls now. Okay, even though there's no engine controls tab. Just watch. So we're going to resume. Now, I am flying in realistic difficulty level. This is just a test flight. This is not uh, simulation mode. I did turn my engines off before starting the video because I want to show you something real fast. Remember, we've got uh, numbers 1 through 4 assigned to uh, turning the different control of the different engines on and off. And I've got number 5 set up so that it always controls or sets both engine controls to be on. What do I mean by that? So if I press 5, you can kind of see in the very bottom left, it says all engine controls on. Now if I press 1, it says first engine controls off. If I press 2, second engine controls off. I am now controlling neither engine on this airplane. Now if I press 5, all controls are back on. Okay? But for now, we're going to turn off the controls to engine number 2, and then I can actually start only engine number one. This does work with four engine planes too, by the way. We'll get into that a little bit later. Now I can press two again and we'll turn that engine controls back on and says I don't want to shut off number one. I'm going to disconnect engine number one's controls and now I can start engine number two. It sounds way more complicated than it actually is, I promise. And then press five and all engine controls are on. No matter what you do, if you don't remember which con engine controls are connected or disconnected, press 5, and the way I've got my controls set up, everything reconnects instantly. And then whatever different engine throttle settings you had, if you just touch the throttle a little bit, uh, everything will be synchronized again. Okay? Now with that in mind, because this is a twin engine plane, Watch, I can now turn off the controls to engine number one. That would be the left. So now I've only got the throttle hooked up to engine two, which is the right, which I can then throttle up and I can use to turn my plane in a very small space. I can also use this in conjunction with differential braking. So now I'm braking on just the left wheel. I can quite literally, if you look at that, turn my plane on a dime. That left wheel is not moving at all. And then I can reverse this whole scenario. Turn all controls back on and then disconnect engine number two. Brake on the right wheel and I will throttle up the left engine. You see? You have to be a little bit finessy with this so we get it more or less lined up on the runway again. Go back over here. 
about there. But if you ever have to control uh, a twin engine plane, like a small bomber or something, on an aircraft carrier, this could be really handy for you, especially on a stopped carrier deck. Anywho though, so we're going to set the flaps for combat and we're going to take off. Now while we're doing this, I'm also going to set manual engine controls, which I can then use to make sure so there's no mixture control, what have you, but I can then, let me, there we go, radiators are now fully open. So we're going to lift off, okay, gear is coming up, positive rate of climb, flaps are coming up. Now the cowl flaps for this plane are, if you look closely, under the wings, just outboard of the two engines. So if I press right here, I can close them somewhat. You have to look really closely to be able to see it. Just outside the two engines. I'm opening them, look really closely, and now I'm closing them. Now this is important because if you're on a performance or a combat climb, you need to get to altitude in a hurry, I would actually do manual engine controls especially on a Luftwaffe plane like this. I mean, you can just lock the propellers all the way forward, like so, and um, you can open the radiator all the way, and you're climbing. You can see right here, you can climb in first gear, as it were, with the props all the way forwards, and you can climb with the engine, excuse me, the radiators all the way open, and look, my, um, whatchamacallit, I've got the little pipper down there, which is a little bit under 15 degrees for this particular plane. Which, I believe, if I look in the cockpit, is darn near 20 meters per second. That'll be the left-hand gauge that's moving. So now if I push the nose level, the gauge is going towards level. And if I bring the nose back up again, the needle starts pointing up again. I believe we can get really close to 20 meters per second out of this thing. I think about around about 18, pretty consistently, 18 meters per second out of this airplane, which I wish I knew what that was in uh, Church of England, but I don't. So most of you guys use meters per second anyway. Anywho, so one other thing I'm going to mention, well, a couple other things actually. This particular plane, you may recall uh, from the last plane that you saw me in, I was able to feather one engine. This plane does not have automatic feathering per se. So if I, for example, uh, let's see here, deselect engine number two. So now I'm only controlling engine number one. I'm going to kill that engine. Just like I did in the last one. You can see immediately the plane wants to turn left. The left hand engine is no longer working. I'm going to try and bring the propeller pitch all the way back on that, just like I did on the last plane. And it's not quite as effective in this one because it's not actually fully feathering uh, the engine, the propeller, unfortunately. But you can see it is moving slower, so it is doing, um, creating less drag. And if I can get this plane, whoops, no, don't do this to me. If I can get it really slow, then I can hopefully get the engine or that propeller to stop spinning, but is what it is. Different planes behave differently, and this one, I guess, just cannot feather all the way. Unfortunately, yeah, see, no feathering control. Bummer, Gajin. Whatever. Anywho, so we're going to bring that one back online. I'm going to bring the propeller pitch all the way up. I'm going to start it back up again. And then bring all engine controls back online. And we're back to good. Now, one thing you might find interesting, uh, this is a maneuver that a lot of pilots actually did use in real life. Uh, not so much in this plane, but more in something like a P-38. So we're going to nose up, and you may be familiar with the classic hammerhead stall. We get the nose almost perfectly vertical, give or take. We're pretty close now. We're getting close to stall, and I'm going to kick the rudder hard, hard over. And you can see... That was more of a herps maneuver, but whatever. We dip right back down again in almost no space at all. Don't ever do this if someone is following you, by the way, because you almost stop in midair and you make yourself a really easy target. Now what we can do, uh, 
using engine number one again is we're going to keep engine number two all the way up that's the right hand engine get this thing up just about to the vertical I've already disconnected uh, the engine controls for engine number two that's the right now we throttle back which is throttling back only the left engine you see and then we can throttle it back up again hello except that went a little bit haywire <laughs> But you get the idea. It's going to definitely take some practice. Um, but you can pull some maneuvers, especially if you've got a joystick. If you're willing to take the time to practice uh, controlling one engine at a time, you can definitely start pulling some maneuvers that you otherwise wouldn't be able to control, or excuse me, pull off in planes that only had one engine. So that's going to be it for now, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. I hope it's something you can maybe apply to what you're already doing in War Thunder, and I guess we'll see you all later. Happy flying!